I am. Right. You ready? Yeah. So I, I just want to um, welcome and thank everybody so much, um, both students and speakers, um, to participating today and our career specialist and Michelle Marco for all your planning and setting this up. Uh, this, this event is part of a larger grant effort in our state to provide Native youth like those in our district that are on traditional tribal lands of the Puyallup and the Nisqually to learn more about local high wage, high demand careers and the way CTE career pathways can help you prepare for those. And I don't know how many students know what CTE is, career and technical education, but I'm guessing you've likely taken some of our courses or might in the future, um, Microsoft Office, Life Issues, Automotive, Computer Science, Business Marketing, a whole bunch of things. And then we just really look forward to hearing about your dreams and goals and finding ways we can encourage and support your achievement of them. And we're just so glad that you all are here today. So thank you so much for being a part of our CTE family today. Wonderful. Then, thank you, Maya. And then, yeah. um, and then Michelle. Uh, Michelle Marco Akon Koiguma Ada Ha Empoi Yonda. My name is Michelle Marco and I am Kiowa. How are you? I am the Indian Education Specialist for the Puyallup School District. Um, we'd like to acknowledge, just like Maya, Maya said, that we are coming to you today from the traditional homelands of the Puyallup tribe who are still here today. They live, work, raise their children who go to school here on their ancestral land, the land of the Puyallup people. They take care of their community, practice their traditional ways, and speak the Tulshut seed language, just as their ancestors did. So um, I would like to now give the time over to John Claymore, our keynote speaker. He is the Director of Native Education for the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction for the State of Washington. And um, John, I'll, I'll just have you um, introduce yourself too. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up a slide deck here. Let me see if I can get it pulled up real quick before I get started. OK, it looks like it's there. Let me see. OK. Let me get this. Situated here, hold on. From beginning. Okay. Can everybody see that? All right. And uh, hopefully I'm coming across loud and clear. I know there's some um, um, bandwidth um, issues and so forth. So, but anyway, um, folks, my name is John Claymore. I'm the executive director for the Office of Native Education within OSPI. I come to you today um, from the traditional lands of the Suquamish people. I live out here in Paulsville, Washington. I was born out in Crow Agency, Montana. I grew up in Fort Yates, North Dakota on the Standing Rock Reservation, and I'm enrolled down in Eagle Butte, South Dakota on the Cheyenne River Reservation. I belong to one, uh, and that's on my father's side, Grinnell David Claymore. There are seven different bands of the Lakota Sioux. I belong to what's called the Hunk Papa Sioux. Um, on my mother's side, she's enrolled out, she's an enrolled member of, um, out on the White Earth Reservation out in White Earth, Minnesota. She's Chippewa. Come to you today with 33 years of experience, um, 10 as a teacher and 23 as an uh, administrator. And um, just come to you as a continual learner and as an open, with an open heart and an open mind and just really appreciate this opportunity to be able to talk to our, our, our native youth of today and the leaders of tomorrow. Um, it's been my passion and all my work's been um, taking place in, in native education. So just really, appre again, appreciate this opportunity to come to you and talk to you a little bit and share some information with you. Um, as you can see on that picture, um, <laughs> kind of gives away my age. That's uh, one of the only pictures of my, of, uh, my childhood um, that was um, saved um, throughout the years and that type of thing. And off to the left of that picture is my brother, Bob, and he's about 13 months older than me. And I reached out to, them, to him the other day and I said, Bob, what do you think um, we were looking at? Because we we're both looking at the same, in the same direction, both had the same expression on, on our faces and so forth. And, and Native American humor is at the expense of each other. And I'll tell you, growing up in a family of eight, um, <laughs> you always had to be careful. But he said, I think mom was holding up a bologna sandwich, John, <laughs> up off to the, off to the side. <laughs> and said, look at your neck. It's just sitting on your shoulders. There's no neck there type of thing. But I just really enjoy um, 
reaching back because it brings me back to where we're at today, folks. Um, talking with um, talking with the youth and talking about what that looks like in the near future as they take their um, take it to the, the post secondary um, level on on whatever they choose to do. Um, so um, today I'm going to share some information with you. I'm going to I'm going to do a call out for our students to make sure that um, we're doing what we need to do um, to be able to move forward in a good way. Um, and just some other information that might be helpful and hopefully you'll find some of this um, entertaining as well. Um, just passionate about native ed and, and, and our kids and, and kids that, that are on this um, on this zoom today. Um, I miss you. I really miss you. You give the, you give us the energy. And as um, OSPI um, um, employee, um, I don't get to see those smiling faces every day and I miss those. So um, thank you for being here today. What I want to share with you for, first was just, uh, it's, this is the vision, the Native American vision within the Office of Native Education and through um, our different Native Education um, organizations. And this is something that's, um, that's not new to us. It's, um, uh, hold on, I just gotta get my picture out of the way so I can see my screen here, hold on. This is not something that's new to us. Um, as you can see, this is this comes from where the sun rises back in 2008. But we we're talking about this these same things back in 1928 with the Merriam report about um, how we take care of our kids, and that could look a little differently. And I, I'm and um, what we're pushing for is get back to this way of way of thinking. And I usually don't read um, um, PowerPoints to people, but this one is really important, and I want to take that time to make sure that we're all hearing the same thing. Indian education dates back to a time when all children were identified as gifted and talented. Each child had a, had a skill and ability that would um, contribute to the health and vitality of the community. Everyone in the community helped to identify and cultivate these skills and abilities. The elders were entrusted to oversee this sacred act of knowledge being shared. That is still our vision for Indian education today. What this is saying to me, there's no such thing as a throwaway kid, not within our native, um, native communities. Everybody had a skill, everybody had a purpose, everybody had a job to carry out for the vitality of, that, of, of the tribe itself. And you know that second to the last sentence there really stands out to me, and this is where we need to really need to get back um, through the tribal consultation um, process. The elders were entrusted to oversee this sacred act of knowledge being shared as our first teachers. This is becoming my all-time favorite slide, folks. I'll tell you what, because it, it, it speaks volumes and, and um, um, what we need to get back to and, and making sure that we're taking care of our, our kids in the best way possible. This here, um, people are starting to refer to me as a 24% guy. And what 24% means to me is when I took this job at, at OSPI, did a lot of research as we're going in. What 24% is, it's, it's the dropout or slash pushout rate amongst Native American learners in K-12 settings. When you talk about 24%, that's equivalent to, um, depending on the, on the data that's being collected, that could be anywhere from 3,700 kids to a little over 15,000 Native learners dropping out on, on an annual basis. And I say that because the data that's being collected, and that's a federal mandate, it's really difficult to um, identify our students because of the different choices that they have to make when they self-identify in the beginning of the year. They have the choice of either American Indian, um, Alaska Native, is one category. We got right around 15,000 kids in that in that category, okay? Then when you get that second category of American Indian, Alaska Native and um, Hispanic, there's right around 18,000 kids there. Then when you go to that third category, American Indian, Alaska Native, um, two or more races, right around 23,000 kids in there. So we're saying we got 61,000 kids, Native learners in, in the state of Washington. And I think if the, the data was collected in a better way, um, we'd be closer to 80 to 100,000 kids. But when we talk about that 24%, this is critical. As a sovereign nation and, a, and as sovereign students, we can't have 24% or a quarter of our students dropping out on an annual basis. And I, and I say again, you know, this is our native, our, the native youth of today and the leaders of tomorrow um, struggling to get to that graduation stage. I say, stay focused. Stay, you know, um, move from that back of the room to the front of the room. Do what we have to do to make sure that one, we're accounted for, and two, that we're moving forward in the best way possible. But 24%, again, it, it's, 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 it's critical, and we just cannot have that. And we're doing a lot of um, work around this um, dropout slash push out um, um, rate to make sure that it's right and making sure that all voices are integrated into these plans. 
and that's going to take place through the tribal consultation. And I say, we need you. You know, our future depends on you. So please um, take this serious and, and do what you have to do to make sure that you're getting to that next level, whatever that might be. When, when we start talking about um, how to get to that next level, we start talking about the high school and beyond plan and what that looks like. It's a, it's a, a plan that's um, put out there and it's supposed to be um, starting up in seventh grade. The, the initial talks are supposed to start in seventh grade and it um, um, goes all the way up through 12th grade. And it's about the dream job ahead. What is it? What is it that you'd like to see? What is it that you'd like to take part in? What are you passionate about? Because again, a job shouldn't, um, <laughs> I always look at it at, in, in my own personal work is this ain't a job to me. This is a calling to me. This is something that I enjoy, something that I'm passionate about and something that um, I'm, I'm committed to helping and, and making it, um, changes as needed. So when we talk about the high school and beyond plan, there's different components to that. Talk about the career, um, the career interest survey. What are you interested in? This will take, this will help you um, better identify the direction that you would like to go in. And it um, points out different things on, on again, um, passions. When we talk about educational goals, this will help you set up um, uh, on that, on that pathway to the high school and beyond on it sets pretty um it's pretty good resources as far as those educational goals and what you would like to do and how you would like to get there this here when i was going over this when i was a superintendent at some of the different schools when i'd go over that four-year course planner my goodness i'll tell you it's like um when we, when we started working through this with kids it really started making sense to them and then they became part our ownership to what's taking place and, and stakeholders in this process. But coming up with a good four year course planner, when you're going to take your courses, what grades, what classes, that type of thing, leading you to the to, to your um, um, high school and beyond. Resume or activity log. This is part of um, either 11th or 12th grade um, um, materials or that will or you'll, you'll be putting together a resume and keeping um, together an activity log on what that looks like. I've always went above and beyond this as, as an um, administrator within the school. And I say, no, you need to apply for three colleges or whatever it might look and all these other little pieces that we can add into this high school and beyond plan to help them to make sure that we have those wraparound supports that, that's needed to um, um, support those kids in moving forward. And the last thing, there's some additional requirements to this high school and beyond plan. And again, this deals with um, if we, um, if, if we're ready to move forward in that type of thing, as far as classes passed and all that different type of stuff. So um, all kinds of different things in this high school and beyond plan, but I highly encourage that you, if you have not taken a look at it, please take a look at it. It's not that, um, it's not a, a big comprehensive um, plan, you know, with a lot of work and, and, and or a lot of time put into it and stuff like that. But obviously the more time you put into it, the better the plan becomes. So um, high school and beyond plan. And this here, this slide here talks about opening doors. I come from a family of educators. My father was superintendent of schools back in Fort Yates, North Dakota on a Standing Rock Reservation. My mother was a business, business manager. They kind of had a coup on the school there. But I'll tell you what, um, a lot of people move forward in, in that school system and as uh, and our leaders today. So really appreciate the support that um, the families um, provide. And you know, as well as I do, and I'm speaking to the choir in Indian country, our families are considered extended families. So um, wrap, again, reach out kids, reach out to those um, supports that you have within your families, um, not, not only within your families, but outside external supports as well. Um, it's critical. One of my all time favorite quotes, like I said, in my land acknowledgement, as I opened up, um, I grew up in Fort Yates, North Dakota on a Standing Rock Reservation. I had the opportunity to walk by Chief Sitting Bull's grave every day as I went and went to school. My dad would have to come and pull me off that um, the boulder that was on top of his gravesite. The connection between um, the, the the land and the leadership and and so forth. It was just something that exuded from that um, gravesite and and um, what he talks about, you know. And again, this is um, this has been this took place a long time ago. This quote. Let's put our, let us put our minds together and see what life we will make for our children. It's about all of us. It's about all of us coming together. It's about those teachers, those counselors, those administrators within your schools. It's the school boards. It's the native organizations throughout the state of Washington that are coming to the table, planning accordingly, trying to clear those pathways to ensure that you get to that next step, whatever that might be. 
I always say what you do today will determine what you do tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year. Invest now. Invest now. And you guys already heard me say this one, but this is one I, I've carried along for a long time, going the distance and making a difference in the native youth of today and the leaders of tomorrow. Our kids are powerful. They have a lot to say. Their voice is strong. And I know that because we hold a, a series called Share Our Stories, Hear Our Voices. And with, with that series, it's a reach out to parents and students. And we're going to have one on, um, this will be the third one coming up on March 7th. And I'll make sure I get that information out to the folks um, within this, um, this call to, to join in. Our topic on this next, on March 7th, is going to be um, resiliency as we come out of this pandemic. Okay. And like I said, my dad was superintendent of schools down in our over in 48th North Dakota on a standing rock. And I remember sitting around tables. People say, well, how many years of experience do you have in education? I say 55 <laughs> because we talked about education the whole time in our household on, on what um, and we always, you know, I always kid around and say um, we didn't have a choice as kids. Our choice was what college are you going to go to? And that's the grounding that, that, that our parents set up for us. It wasn't if you're going to go, is what where you're going to go type of thing. So from, from early on, that, that belief system was um, ingrained. And I appreciate them for that. Both my parents have passed on now, but I'll tell you what, as first teachers, ah, powerful. Yeah, I want just a little activity, a three-minute activity here. And if I can get some help from um, somebody, because I cannot read the chat. So if, um, if I can get somebody to read out the responses in the chat. And what I'd like for you to do, students, I want you to just post in your chat, what's your dream job? What are you thinking about? What, what, what interests you today? And I'll just give a little time here. And again, I cannot see that chat. So if somebody could take that on and just um, um, verbal, verbalize the, the chats that are the responses that are coming through, I appreciate it. Absolutely. And the event you mentioned on March 7th, um, that is a Sunday. Oh, so I, I must have my um, must have my days mixed up. I apologize. I will reach back and, and um, look at my calendar one more time and, and um, get that out to you right away. Thank you for bringing that up. For yes, definitely. For, for yes. So some of the responses, I want to move to Japan and become an animator, paramedic, scientist, not sure yet, still thinking it's a hard decision. Crime scene photographer. To be a teacher. Hey. Yeah. Chef or metal metal smith, if I said if that's mm -hmm. if I said that correct. A lawyer, but very interested in social studies. So they could combine law and social studies in a job. They would do that. Um, we have someone that wants to be a nanny. Well, folks, I'll tell you what, those are all those are all opportunities and those are all good jobs. Mm -hmm. And if that's, your, if that's your, yep, if that's your dream, that's your passion, I encourage you highly to follow that. And again, wrap around with support, with a support system to help you get there, to follow that dream and put yourself in that, into that type of position. It just, um, it was like music to my ears when I heard teachers are a teacher. Because folks, I'll tell you what, you look around and so forth um, in the state of Washington, there's not, we don't have very many Native American teachers um, within. And um, what we're doing uh, at the Office of Naval Education is we brought in a new position to our office. Shandy Abrahamson is our new CTE um, um, tribal liaison um, position. And I'll tell you what, um, aligning again, um, programs of passion, I call them, um, something that the kids can um, grab onto and follow, follow um, their dream is um, something that's very special. But one of the things that we're talking about within the Office of Native Education is, all, is um, how can we grow our own teachers? So that might be a CTE course that we're coming up, taking a, a cohort of students and, and um, taking them through this process. We got University of Washington um, on board, ready to um, help out and, and this and that and whatever else. So stay tuned on some of the really good work that's taking place in the Office of Native Education. 
Um, I have one more slide here. And, and again, kids, thank you for our students. Thank you, young adults. Thank you for that. And I, from, my, from what I understand, I'm working with, um, or talking to kids um, 12 to 18 years of age at this time. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. My last slide here, folks, and it'll just take a couple minutes. We always say all our, the analogy I'm using um, today is all paddles pulling together. I'm sure some of you have been on those canoe journeys and this and that and whatever else. What a valuable opportunity to learn from and, and to uh, a better understanding of our own culture and, and, and the importance of. But this picture here, um, I was asked a, a couple of years ago, this happened back in the summer of 2018, I asked a couple of years ago to take a group of students out to, um, out to the beach. And my son is a senior right now at Kingston High School, and he's a quarterback on the football team. And the coach came to me and said, hey, we want to go do some teamwork skills and um, get the kids away from the distractions. And I said, coach, who's, what, what are you considering distractions? He says, parents. I said, hey, my, my son's on your team. Uh, um, uh, keep us involved instead type of thing. But anyway, we went out to the beach, out to the Quinault Indian um, Reservation in Tohola. That's where I first started teaching um, 33 years ago. And um, it's like a second home to me. It's a family. Um, the canoe here, the ocean going canoe, it's called Sopu Kapu, Wolf's Coat. Okay, this has been, um, has 12,000 miles on the ocean. Um, the skipper in the back, Richie Underwood, is like a brother to me. The lessons that he taught as we're going up and down the Quinault River with the salmon running under the, under the canoe to the flight of the eagle to the, um, the transportation highway, water highways, um, was incredible. This canoe was put together without any type of measuring tool folks this is all off of traditional learnings and what i and i use this as an analogy these kids will remember this um canoe trip for a lifetime um and i say all paddles pulling together moving in the same direction helping and supporting in whatever way we can in lakota we call we have a word that we say unkichiapi, which means we all help each other medakiase we are all related and with that said, I want to thank you for this time. I encourage each and every one of you students to um, get after it, guys. We can do this. And if there's anything that we can do from the Office of, of, of Native Education within OSPBI, please reach out to us. We're ready to clear those pathways. Thank you so much. Appreciate your attention and, and, and um, being, a, being in this space today. Hands up. Have uh, a good day. That's mm -hmm. awesome. John, thank you so much. That was fabulous information. We really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. Um, and I love your call out because it is our native youth of today are the leaders for tomorrow. And, um, and we're all about partnership. So everything you said, um, that's what we do. And so I just love the information that you shared with these students and that call out to them. That was wonderful. Thank you. Patty, thank you so much. I just want to recognize one person on the tile as I popped off the screen. We got Mary Wilbur down here from Lake Washington School District as well. And Mary is part of our um, R16 advisory committee. And uh, I'll tell you, she's clearing pathways, folks. And just really appreciate uh, Mary for all the work that she does and so forth. So Yeah, thank you, Mary. And thank you for your work at the state level, John. Thank you. Mm -hmm.